Congressman Blake Farenthold, member of the House Oversight Committee, joins us now to discuss this. And, uh, Congressman, thanks for your time tonight, sir. Oh, always fun, Tim. Uh, all right. So what can you tell us about the lawsuit uh, uh, that was filed today? Well, you know, we tried to uh, get Holder on criminal contempt, but since the Justice Department that he oversees uh, is in charge of prosecuting that as a fallback, he came up and voted with for civil contempt. So now we have the authority to sue him in civil court uh, to have the court order him to turn over the documents. And they have some remedies in the event he doesn't. Okay. Um, so what's the what, what, what kind of timeline uh, do we have on this, Congressman? I mean, I know that, you know, when we're talking about the court system, uh, there, there is no hard and fast rule, but uh, I'm assuming the administration has, what, 30 days to respond? Uh, yeah, the whole, this is going to take a while. Okay. Let, let's be real. No matter what the decision of the trial court in Washington, D.C., it's going to be appealed, and I wouldn't be surprised if this makes it to the Supreme Court. We're dealing with some of the fundamental checks and balances our founding fathers put in place in the Constitution. It is the ability of Congress to oversee the executive branch. And, and th- this is not a matter to be taken lightly. We've never taken it lightly, and I hope the courts don't. No, I, I, absolutely. You know, it, it was amazing. We were talking about this at the beginning of the program. NBC Nightly News didn't even cover this tonight. Uh, they ran. Uh-huh. A, they, they had they had time for a story about puppies, apparently, but they didn't even cover this. And I, you know, this is this is the legislative branch suing the executive branch, which puts it into the judicial branch. I mean, for, for people who follow politics, you really can't get much more compelling than this. Uh, th- this is the high drama of politics, and it's the system working the way our founding fathers intended it to work. We've got an executive branch that is unwilling to come clean with Congress and the American people, and we are going to the judicial branch to enforce our constitutional prerogative to oversee how agencies that we fund operate. Absolutely. Because, again, the documents that are in question here, the documents that the administration refused to turn over, uh, at least the documents that uh, the the suit is uh, alleging or or going after are these 1,300 documents uh, that the executive branch says they don't have to turn over. They're claiming executive privilege. These are documents that relate to why it took them 10 months uh, to tell you that they lied to you about no guns being walked in Fast and Furious. These are the documents associated with the cover-up. And I've said on almost every occasion I've been on with you, it's a cover-up that gets you. And I don't think they would be fighting this hard to stop the disclosure of the documents if there wasn't something in there they didn't want the American people to see. You know, I, I have to say, I think that you're right. Uh, and when you look at some of the documents that have been disclosed in other areas, whether it's uh, the judge's determination uh, in a, a, a judicial watch suit recently that... Political appointees were involved, apparently, in the uh, decision-making uh, surrounding the dropping in the new Black Panthers Party case out of Philadelphia. Uh, that's something that the uh, Obama administration had denied. That's something the attorney general actually denied. Um, you know, you have to wonder, what, what is in there? What, what, what do these documents show uh, in terms of, um, again, you know, senior-level officials, uh, when they knew about this operation, and, and, and why on earth they waited so long to let the rest of us know? And obviously the president's claim of executive privilege ups the ante in this. This is a huge expansion of the doctrine of executive privilege. Executive privilege, as we look back from the days of Nixon and the Pentagon Papers, we're talking about executive privilege only applying to the thought processes of the president and him dealing with his closest advisors. And you've got President Obama on record saying he didn't know anything about Fast and Furious until very late on in, in, in the procedure. So either he's, that was a false statement or executive privilege doesn't apply, or the government is arguing for such a broad expansion of executive privilege, it will basically gut Congress's oversight, oversight authority. If the executive privilege is upheld here, with no evidence that the president was involved, the Government Oversight and Reform Committee might as well pack it up and just go back to naming post offices. Uh, well, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, all right, now, Congressman, uh, I want to ask you while we've got you here, uh, one of your colleagues, you know, tapped by uh, Mitt Romney over the weekend to be his, well, I guess the the, the uh, decision was made several days ago, but they, 
They kept it secret until over the weekend. But uh, Paul Ryan named the uh, vice presidential candidate. Do you have any thoughts? Aside from the fact, how cool is it I'm on a first-name basis with the person who <laughs> might be the vice president? Paul is one of the sharpest guys that, uh, that I know. And it's a statement, I think, uh, by Mitt Romney that he takes the budget crisis and the spending problem that this government has seriously. And he's bring, willing to bring on uh, the person who is the architect of the only comprehensive plan to get us out of the mess we're in. This really, it, it shows how serious Mitt Romney is. He's choosing the person to solve the problem, not the person who will get him the most political gain. Congressman, again, thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program. Great talking to you tonight. Uh, you watching the Cowboys game at all? You know, I was just watching. I, came, I, I stepped into the other room to, <laughs> to, to, to come talk to you. My wife is a huge Cowboys fan. Her dad was a football coach, and she grew up in Dallas. She's a bigger fan than I am. Oh, fantastic. Well, we'll let you get back to it. Thanks so much, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks.